Hey guys, welcome back to part three of the cut page tutorial. Uh, so, so far we've, we've looked at the media pool, we've looked at the viewer, we've looked at the timeline in detail, and all the different ways you can import clips and, and manipulate clips and, and so on and so forth. Today we're going to be looking, and I'm just going to bring a uh, clip down in here, we're going to be looking at this button here mostly, this is the tools button here. So when you have a clip down below in your timeline, you can come up here to this tools button, this opens up a whole host of options that you can do to manipulate uh, whatever particular clip that you have selected. So the first button we're going to look at here is the transform button. What that's going to do is that's going to allow us to um, grab these handles here if we wanted to for example just shrink the size of the clip. We can do that and then when we play our clip it's just going to show up like that. You'll notice there's black in behind. If we were to take this, move it up to track two, take another clip, bring it in behind. That clip behind is gonna show through. But for now, we'll just keep this on track one. You can also come up to this handle up here, which is your rotate handle, and rotate it any way that you want here. You can also click anywhere in here and drag this around. And all these controls below here do essentially some of the same transforms that we were doing here. So you can click and you can drag left and right on all of these controls and they will manipulate this. So if I left click and drag here, this is going to change the width and it's also gonna change the height because I have this lock on. So if I take this lock off, I'm just manipulating the width, just manipulating the height, or I can keep the lock on and manipulate both with either one. Here's my position in the X axis and the Y axis. Here's my rotate. And if I want to reset any of these, after I've done some manipulation, this little icon here, this little reset icon will show up here. See when I mouse over, I can click that and that will undo each one of these individually. So if I wanted to reset my sizing, I could do it this way. I could reset my position this way. I can also, if I've done some manipulation that I don't like, here, I've done a rotate, I've moved it over here. I can come over to this icon here, and this will reset everything. A couple more options over to the right here. This is for our pitch, and this is our yaw, so this will give you this, uh, you know, Star Wars effect. And you can manipulate that in a couple different directions. Suppose I can also do some mirrors in, uh, in both axes here. So if I wanted to flip horizontally, I can do that. And if I wanted to flip this whole thing upside down, I can do that as well. So I'm going to do a reset on that. So over here you'll see this little toggle switch here and this toggle is going to act on each of these icons individually. So this next one is a crop icon. We're going to look at that in a second. But if you notice here, if I do just some, just a very quick transform, I can turn that off. That's going to turn off um, just this one that I have selected here, transform in this case. So we'll turn that on. I'm just going to do a reset here and let's move over to the crop. So the crop is pretty straightforward. Again, we have these handles here, but instead of the transform, the crop is really almost placing a window uh, that you can sort of move over your clip just to show what you want. And again, we have these sliders down here that we can manipulate so we can move the left side, move the right side, the top and the bottom. We also have this softness control down here if I increase and this can be both positive and negative so you, you'll notice I can drag it both to the left and the right if I go in the positive direction you're gonna see this sort of feathering effect um, as, as we expand outwards from the from the initial box selection and when I pull things to the left we come inwards so here you can kind of see you're kind of creating a, a vignette effect so if I were just do a full reset to get everything back to full size grab this pull this over to the left there you can see a, a nice vignette effect if that's what you're looking for. That's a little bit overdone possibly, but in any case. So the next control to take a look at is this audio button over here. I would suggest to just to ignore that if you wanna do any audio stuff, go over to the Fairlight page. Um, I've had some issues with this. It seems a little bit buggy. The idea really is though when you click on it, all it brings up is a volume slider for that particular clip. Um, a lot of the times I, I just click on this and it doesn't do anything. This clip here doesn't even have any audio. Um, and 
the slider seems to come up. So when you start to manipulate the slider, this little red guy up here, I think, is, is, is trying to say that there's no audio for this clip. Um, but in any case, a little bit buggy, I would suggest maybe just to avoid it. Um, if I'm using it wrong, please let me know in the comments and, uh, and I'll update the description to, 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 to show what I was doing wrong. So I'm gonna delete this clip here. I'm gonna bring in this clip of this lift and we'll play that for a little bit. What I wanna do is I wanna, this, is, this clip is already kind of in slow motion. I wanna increase the speed of the clip kind of halfway through. So I'm gonna go up and I'll pick just an arbitrary point in the clip I'm going to split the clip. I'm going to select the second half of this clip. I'm going to come up to the speed control, click on that. And this interface here comes up. What I see here is a scaling factor for speed. So one meaning it's playing uh, at the speed that the clip was imported at. If I increase this number to two, for example, it's going to double the speed of the clip. I can also bring it back into smaller numbers, like 0.5 would be, the clip would take twice as long to run. So here I'm gonna put something pretty drastic because I wanna show something. I'm gonna pick five. So that's gonna increase the speed of the clip by five times, and also it's gonna reduce the length of the clip by five times as well. So what, let's, let's watch this clip here, sort of shrink down in size. There we go. Uh, one thing I wanna notice here is this control over here is showing, this is the time that the new this new clip is gonna take here. So if you click in it, it kind of gives you a little bit of a tease that you can actually type numbers in here. It would be nice if you could say, I want this to be 10 seconds and it would set up the scaling factor. Um, it does not work that way though. And what I want to show now with the scaling factor of five, I'm going to bring my playhead back a little bit here. And what I want you to notice is I'm going to, once I play things is watch how abrupt this transition is to go from slow motion to five times as fast. Let's take a look at that. So if you notice that in the viewer up here, I'll play that one more time. So that might not be really what you're going for, that really abrupt transition. So I've switched over to the manual, the DaVinci Resolve manual. And what I see here in the manual under the speed control is a number of these options here, which don't, don't seem to show up on, on my version. I think there's some bugs that are happening with this control as well because I have seen these pop up and then whatever I've done since then, I can't seem to get them to show up again. So I think you can use this control for very basic speed manipulation, but if you want to do anything a little bit more serious, you probably want to head over to, um, to the edit page. So we're going to skip over this camera button for now. This is worthy of a, of a video on its own, so I don't want to get too much into the details there. So we're going to turn our attention over here to this dynamic zoom. So to do that, I'm going to just clean up my timeline, just bring in another the same, same clip here, just the last clip was split in two, so I just want to go to a fresh clip. What this is going to do when I click on this dynamic zoom, first, uh, I just want to make sure this toggle is turned on because I want to have this implemented. This dynamic zoom is going to really zoom over the time of the clip. So first, what I probably want to do for this example is make this clip a little bit shorter. So to do that, I can come into my media pool, double click on this, set an in point and set an out point. That clip now is simply two seconds long. So I'm going to get rid of that clip on the timeline below and drag in my new, new one here, which is two seconds long. Now, what I want to do is I'll come up to this dynamic zoom. I'm going to turn this toggle on. And the way this works, there's two rectangles. There's this green one here, and there's also this red one here out on the border. I'll bring it in a little bit just so you can see it. Throughout the duration of this clip, the zoom is going to go from the green rectangle out to the red rectangle. So for example, to really, I'm just going to be very, very dramatic here to uh, just to, to, to illustrate what this is doing. Zoom in on this guy's head, that's where it's gonna start. And at the end, it's gonna come up to where this rectangle is here. So let's go back to the start of the clip and I'll watch that happen. Okay, so a couple controls that we can do with this is, is here we can switch the green and the red rectangles. So if I were to click this swap, now we're gonna start out and we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna finish the clip on this guy's head. There we go. We can also use these buttons over here to change 
the transition between the green and the red. So this one here is linear, so it'll linearly zoom in. This one here will be a little bit more smoother. It'll, 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 it's called ease in. It'll start off the transition slowly and it'll speed up towards the end of the clip. This here is an ease in and, and an ease out. So the transitions will be slower at the start and the end of the clip, where most of the transition is happening in the middle of the clip. This one here is we start our transition fast and we end slow. So with this selected here, you're gonna see the zoom start slowly and then speed up towards the end. Let's play it. Slow and then right towards the end, it sort of snaps in. So you can play with those to, tr to, to play with your transition times. There's also over here a few different presets. So there's a zoom preset you can click on and I'll play these just to show you what they do. So that's just a simple preset there. There's a pan preset to pan from in this case, right to left. And again, I could use the swap control here if I wanted to change that pan from the right to left or left to right. Then there's this preset here to play or to, to sort of slide from top right to bottom left. So you can play with those and you can manipulate these, these rectangles in any way you want. You can sort of pick them up and move them and do whatever you need to. So it's pretty powerful to get some very quick dynamic zooms happening. Okay, so finally we wanna focus on this composite button over here. So I'm gonna bring in two clips. I'm gonna bring in this beach clip here and I'm gonna bring in this sand. I walk in the sand clip over top. Essentially what you can do with this, for, so I'm gonna select this clip on top, come into the composite button. This here is gonna control how um, this clip here interacts with what's underneath it. So for Photoshop users, this will be uh, very familiar stuff. Um, where this is probably most useful in, in, in the context of the cut page is to just change the opacity. So if I just wanna change that top clip, I can bring the opacity down and sort of merge those those two together. So there's also a number of other options in here. I'm not going to go into these ones in detail. Again, this is a uh, subject of another uh, of, of another video. So thanks so much, everybody. Uh, I'll be back with one more tutorial in this series. We're going to be talking how you manipulate these clips in the timeline in a little bit more detail. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.